And a year and a half after tearing his Achilles, signing with a new team and a long road of rehab, Kevin Durant finally suited up with the Brooklyn Nets to open training camp yesterday. KD, how you feeling? Are you physically going 100%? Oh yeah, every every drill that I've done, I've been going as hard as I could. I don't mean 100%. I mean, what it was. I mean, shit. I've been in the league for 14 years. Even if I didn't have an Achilles, I probably wouldn't be 100%. You know, you know, it's the wear and tear over time, I guess. Uh, but I feel I feel solid in the game. And coach want to pull me out early, unexpectedly. Of course, I'll you know try to push back. But I know they had my best interest. Uh, but like I said, we was gonna take it a day at a time. Max, you think that Kevin Durant should be able to take the Nets to the finals? Should he be expected to do so? No, you can't expect him to do it. I think that that would be expecting a guy to make one of the most miraculous comebacks from an Achilles of all time. And I don't just think you should expect that. And it's not that I'm anti-Durant. I love KD. I love watching him play. And I love his attitude. I love the fact that we've seen him go from what seemed to me from afar to be an insecure kid. And most kids are insecure, right? to a confident adult, you know, who, who, you know, who's not so thin-skinned and maybe doesn't have the same kind of rabbit ears he used to and is more, seems to me, to be more kind of um, uh, uh, satisfied with who he is and what he's done and where he's going. So all that's good, I root for him. But Stephen A., if I just expect him to get to the finals coming off an Achilles, even with Kyrie, because Kyrie has also been a chemistry destroyer, as great a player as he is, um, Dinwiddie and, and, and Levert and these guys, that's kind of like downing them if they get to the conference finals. And I think that's as much as you can expect. I'm not, in other words, I'm not going to call this season a failure. First year back from a catastrophic injury, first year head coach, guys who've never really played together if they get to the conference finals. Like the Bucks have been playing together for a long time and they added Drew Holiday, which is exactly what they needed. Uh, you, know, you have teams in the conference like Miami like Philadelphia, who have more continuity and, and aren't coming off catastrophic injury to their best player. Just like with the Lakers, had they not won the whole thing, had they just gotten to the Western Conference Finals, I wouldn't have said this is a failure because I would have picked them probably to win this year. To me, next year is the Nets year. If they do it this year, that's ahead of schedule. I'm not expecting them to win the chip this year, but I expect them if Kevin Durant is at least 80% because I think he's that lethal, he's that phenomenal. I think better than 80%, they should be able to go to the finals. But it's not just because of Kevin Durant. Um, Kevin Durant is sensational. We know what he brings to the table, and I don't think that he needs to be extremely athletic and 100% himself to do the 6'11 with a 7'6 wingspan and can pull up from 30. I think he'll be fine. He's going to easily average 25 a game. If that's what he wants to do, Kyrie Irving had a shoulder injury didn't have a leg injury i expect him to be nothing short but spectacular he's a showstopper we know what he brings to the table but here's the interesting element and this is why i think that people don't need to sleep on the nets in terms of getting to the finals i think they need to make the move for james harden to win it all but i don't think they need to make that move to get to the finals because i don't view the eastern conference the way that i view the west when i look at the eastern conference i'm thinking about a 26 year old spencer dinwiddie that averaged 20 a game i'm thinking about a joe Harris who just got his new deal that shot 42 plus percent from three-point range I'm thinking about a Karis Levert who averaged 18 points a game and we know he could ball especially what we saw him do uh, particularly in that game against Portland that they lost to the closeout game no eight game bubbles uh, those eight games in a bubble where they were going up against Damian Lillard and those boys these brothers can play and when I look at what they bring to the table and how they can play I don't underestimate nor do I sleep on what they bring to the table. I think that combined with veteran leadership in that locker room to help Kevin Durant, I definitely think that when you look at it and it comes down to this, they got a superstar in Kevin Durant, who at 80%, by the way, is still a superstar. They got a showstopper in Kyrie Irving, and they got a bunch of supplementary parts that ain't average. These brothers, Karis LeVert, Spencer Dinwiddie, can play. Joe Harris can really, really shoot. Jared Allen's only 21 years of age, averaged 11 to 9. I'm looking at them, and I'm saying, yo, man, I can't sleep on these brothers. The fact of the matter is, when I look at the Eastern Conference, the question is, who do you have that can really 
really neutralize or nullify what Kevin Durant can bring to the table. It still ain't the Greek freak come playoff time because he don't have that kind of perimeter game to be that formidable. He'll get numbers, but when you really, really need guys to do some things, I don't think he's that guy. And as much as I love Drew Holiday and as an elite of a defender as he is and as great of a two-way player as he is, I think the Nets have enough weapons where that wouldn't be enough. If Kevin Durant is plus 80%, well, I believe the Brooklyn Nets should be in the finals. Yeah, if, I'd say if Kevin Durant's closer to his real self. I mean, at 80%, let's call it Paul George. Forget about exactly the game, the size, like how much value is 80% of KD. Let's call that Paul George. I look at Paul George, Kyrie Irving, and, and, and in other words, Paul George is about 80% of the player that KD is. I look at Paul George, Kyrie Irving, Levert, and these guys, and I think that's a damn good team. But as soon as you stop thinking of KD like MVP KD, and start thinking of him like an all-star or an all-star plus KD, now you think about matchups like the Bucks, where Giannis is an MVP caliber player, like where Drew Holiday is more than just an all-star when it matters most. Now, they didn't get Bogdanovich in that deal. Had they gotten Bogdanovich even more, still they have Middleton and they have shooting. Brooke Lopez can defend the rim and shoot. When I look at Philadelphia, Simmons and Embiid, in terms of upper end talent and size, you can start to compare those guys to Kyrie and KD. Kyrie and KD more talented, but not much more talented. Those are two potential MVP caliber talents, and Daryl Morey has brought in real shooting. Not D and three guys instead of three and D like Josh Richardson, but Seth Curry and real three and D guy like Danny Green, not to mention Dwight Howard, who's very efficient in the paint and really good defensively, right? So I start to look at these other teams who have more continuity among their best players, not to mention Miami, Stephen A., where you say, no, they don't have the upper end talent to match the Nets, but they have continuity, they have coaching, they have the organization, they have Jimmy Buckets, right? They have Tyler Hero, who we saw, damn, that dude is super young, and he is a baller. They have Bam, who just signed up. They have, they have Tyler uh, 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 Duncan Robinson, who can shoot the lights out. They, they have a really good team. I see competition like that in the East. This ain't your big brother's big e you know, big brother's East, right? This is the new East. They have better, higher-end teams. And KD coming off that injury, I'm just not going to assume that he gets to the finals. I'll assume they get to the conference finals. They'll be one of the two teams left standing in the East, but I'm not going to assume more than that. Well, listen, I, I, and I guess you're right about that because we, we shouldn't assume it. My, my ex, to me, it's an expectation only because I recognize how significant all of this is for KD. You know, you, you left Golden State. You went to Brooklyn. You know what? You wanted your own team. You want to guide your own team to the title. So it's not only the legacy you left behind with Steph and Clay and those boys in Golden State. It's also the fact that LeBron James just won his fourth chip. What you going to do? Because KD would have tied him if KD had ultimately not gotten hurt. He would have had his three rings because they would have won three straight because they would have walloped Kawhi Leonard and the and Toronto Raptors probably would have swept them in my estimation. So I'm looking at him coming off that injury, coming everyone. back here, and with LeBron being that dude, the champion right now, the four-time champion, having Anthony Davis in the crew, I think Brooklyn's going to need to make a move for James Harden because I think that's the only thing that could potentially knock the Lakers off is if James Harden arrived in Brooklyn. I don't think anything else gives anybody a shot against the Los Angeles Lakers, but in terms of KD and his agenda and what he's got to prove, listen, you're trying to sit up there and match and match LeBron. You're trying to get another chip. Did KD bring a chip to Brooklyn? To Brooklyn, New York? A champion in Brooklyn, as you said? It's over. Because of KD? Man, please. KD does that? This is what it is. This is what it is. Highly motivated. If KD Highly motivated. brings a chip to Brooklyn, Stephen A., if KD brings a chip to Brooklyn at any point during this contract, he is going to join in every conversation the uppermost echelon of all-time greats. That's if right. he does that, he's going to be the biggest star in no the world. No question. No question. Well, we're going to just have to see what happens. According to Caesars right now, the Nets trail only the Lakers with the best odds to win the title. All right, guys, we're going to leave it there. We're going to stay in the East for the next segment, though. We have Sixers' Ben Simmons.